Hello everyone. Now quadratic equations is a topic that is not only scoring for counsel but also is, is very easy once you are understand it in a proper way. Okay. So today we will see that how to deal with quadratic equation in a simple way and how to score more marks in this particular chapter for counsel. Okay. So I am Michael Dutta. You all are watching the Mathematics. Abhinav Sawal Hoga Sawal. So let's begin. Now for ICSC, to understand this chapter, we'll first begin with the basic. Okay. So now first I'll write an equation here. This equation which I'm writing, this is called the general form of the quadratic equation. Okay. It is the general form. Okay. Now what do I mean when I'm saying the general form? Okay, now why the name is quadratic equation? So a polynomial or an expression which is a part of an equality such that if the highest power of the variable is 2, so any equation in which the highest power of the variable is 2 is basically quadratic equation. Like in the same way when the highest power is 1, it's linear. So highest power is 2, then it's called a quadratic equation. Right? Now, to understand a quadratic equation, you first need to know what is the general form. So what is it? It's ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0. Okay. Now here a is the coefficient of the square term, b is the coefficient of the linear term, and c is the constant term. Okay. And it's equal to 0. So this is basically the general form of a quadratic equation. Okay. According to the problems that we have in our syllabus, before going further to that, we have to first understand that, see, first of all, it's a quadratic equation. So basically, the highest part is 2 as we have discussed. Now, for this type of equations, when we solve them, we will always get two roots. Why I am saying that we will get always two roots? Because f the power is 2, so we will get two roots, right? Like a linear equation, we get a single value. For if it's a linear equation in one variable, in the same way, if it's a quadratic equation, then we'll get two roots. Okay? Now, now to understand, but it's not a mandatory situation that for every quadratic equation will have a root. No, I'm not saying that. Okay? Now, there is a way to check that a given quadratic equation will have a root or not. Okay? Now, to understand that, we have to first understand the nature of the roots. Okay? So, we'll see nature of roots. Okay. Now, to understand the nature of roots, there are, there is a particular way of it. For that, we have to first understand a term which is called discriminant. Okay. Which we denote by capital D. Now, what is discriminant? Now, first of all, if you have a given equation which is in the general form, your first job is to find the three coefficients a, b and c. Okay. Now the formula of the discriminant is b square minus 4ac. So you just for any given equation, you just simply find the value of b using this formula. Okay. Now, there are three possibilities. See, any value if you are finding there are always three possibilities. That either that value will be a positive value or the value will be 0 or the value will be negative. So what will happen if the values of B are positive, 0 and negative? Let's see. So the first case we are going to see. If B is greater than 0. So if B is greater than 0, always remember that the given equation will have two roots. Not only two roots, you can say it will have two real and distinct roots. This is important. Okay. So if d is greater than 0, then you, without solving, you can, you can conclude that the given equation will have two real and distinct roots. That means the value of the two roots will be different. Okay, that is the first case. Second, if d equal to 0, if d equal to 0, then always remember that the given equation will have two real and equal roots. Now, this is very important. So, if the discriminant is 0, then do understand that the given equation will have equal roots. Okay, that is very important and this condition we can use 
questions for multiple such questions that we get in exam. Okay. And the last condition is when d is less than 0. So remember, if d is less than 0, then the given equation will have no real loops. And why we are saying that? Because just after this, when we will uh, learn that how to solve quantity equation, then we will learn a formula. Where you will see that in that formula, d will come inside a square root. Okay. So if d becomes negative and that comes inside a square root, we, we all know that that case is not possible. It's, a, it's not a defined case. Why? Right? Because we can't find the square root of any number which is negative. Because the square of a negative number is always positive. So negative number and doing the square root of that, we can't find. It's not possible. So it's a not defined case. Right? So that's why right. if d is less than 0, then the equation will have no real roots. Okay, so these are the three cases. Let's talk about the solution of a quadratic equation. So there are basically two ways that we learn for our ICSC Council exam purposes. That the first one is called the factorization method. And the second one is called the formula method. Totally two different approaches. So I'm going to show you all that how these two methods work. Okay. So let me show you both the methods with an example. Okay. Now we'll see this example where we have the equation as x square minus 10x minus 24 equal to 0. And this one we are going to solve by factorization method. Now you all have learned factorization. Okay. In class 9. So basically we are going to apply middle term factorization here. Okay. So let's see. And here what is the product we have? 24 and if you want to break the middle term then we can break it as 4 and 6 because the product is 24 and the addition of 6 and 4 gives us 10. So we can break it as x square minus 4x minus 6x minus 24 equal to 0. So you take common from the first two. So if you, we can take x common so it will be left with x minus 4. We can take a minus 6 common from the last two so you will be getting x minus 4. Okay, so if you take x minus 4 now as an overall common, so you'll be getting x minus 4 into x minus 6. If the product is 0, then there are only two possibilities. Either this one will be 0, or this one will be 0, or both of them 0. Okay, so we'll see both the cases. So we can say either x minus 4 is equal to 0, which will give you x is 4, or you can say x minus 6 is equal to 0, which will and then finally you can conclude that therefore the solution is x equal to 4 comma 6. So as I told you that a quadratic equation will have two roots. So you can see we are getting two roots. So this is basically the factorization. Okay. So basically we factorize and then for the two factors we will give the two roots for two values. Okay. So this is the factorization method. Now I will show you all one example of the formula. Okay, now let's see the formula method. Okay, now, so before starting the formula method, also keep in mind this is also called the discriminant formula. And this is also known as Sridharacharya's formula because this formula was actually given by an Indian mathematician Sridharacharya. Okay, that's all. Now, so see this equation now. Now, this equation is actually not in the general form. So, you may always get an equation which may not be in the general form. So, you can bring it in the, bring it in the general form and then you can solve it. Okay. But generally, in ICSC, when you will get this type of solution questions, they basically tell you either to give the answer correct up to a required decimal number of places or a required significant number of figures. Okay. So, how to deal with such questions? We will see. Suppose, for example, if they tell you to give the answer till the second decimal place, then how we are going to deal with this question? Let's see. If you see the 10 years, you all will find that in every year there is a one question of this type. Okay. So let us understand this question properly. Now first, we will just cross multiply here. So it become, just do LCM and cross multiply. So we will getting something like this. Bring everything to one side. So we will get something like this. Now it is in the general form. Now if we compare with the general form, so what we are getting? A is how much here? A is 2, then B is minus 7, 
and C is minus 1. Okay, now let me tell you all the formula for solving by formula. The formula is x is equal to minus p plus minus square root of d divided by 2a. And if you write in more expanded form, then as you know that d is d square minus 4ac, so you can also write it in this way. Okay, now let's apply that formula. So we'll be getting, so let us first find the value of d. Okay. So, D will be how much then? It will be B square minus 4AC. So, it will be B is minus 7. So, it will be minus 7 whole square minus 4 into A is how much? 2 and C is minus 1. Right. So, we will be getting 49 and this will become plus 8. So, how much we are getting then? It will become 57. Okay. So, D we are getting 57. And if you follow the nature of proofs, then this is greater than 0. So, that means in this, for this equation, we are going to get two real and distinct rows. Okay, now let's begin with the solution. So let's apply the formula. So it'll be minus d, so it'll be minus of minus 7 plus minus square root of d. So d is 57, whole divided by twice of a, so it'll be 4. I think it's quite clear. After that, so this will become 7 plus minus square root of 57, we have to find whole divided by 4. Okay, now let me tell you one thing. The square root of 57, obviously we are not going to like work for the entire finding square root in exam. That will take a lot of time. Now in council exam, you all have provided with mathematical tables. Okay. There you all will find that there is a table of square root. You all must be having the square root table at the back of your books also. So you all can refer from there. Just find out the value of the square root of 57 from your table. Okay. Now remember, if you need to give the answer till second decimal place, then you always take the value at least one place more, that is till third decimal place, so that you can round up. Okay. So 57 square root value we can check from the table. It will be 7.549. Okay. Now we'll use this value. So as you can see, there are two values here: one for plus, one for minus. So let's evaluate. So the first value will be for the plus. And the second value will be for the difference. So if you calculate this, then this will become 14.549 by 4. And this will become minus 0 0.549 divided by 4. Now you need to divide and calculate. Now after dividing, you all will find that you will be getting the, for the first one, you will be getting 3.637 and for the second one, you all will be getting minus 0 0.137. On purpose, I have taken till the third decimal place. Okay, now I am going to round up. So if I round up this, then this will become 3.64 as the next place is more than 5. So I will add 1 with the second place, right? And for the second one, this is going to be minus 0 0.14 as the next one is more than 5. So I'll add one with the second decimal place. So it will become. So these are the two values. So finally, we'll conclude that therefore the solution is 3.64 comma minus 0.14 rounded off till second decimal. So these are the two methods that you all need to know. Now, not only this, but in this chapter you also have word problems. But yes, while solving, so we are going to apply these two concepts only when we are going to solve. So I hope now the concept of the basic of the quantity equation is quite clear to all of you. I hope you all have also learned that what are the different cases and what are the different type of rules that we might have and we can tell that before solving it, right? And the two methods that we are going to use in ICSC, one is the factorization and one is the formula method. Now, if it's not mentioned in the question that which method to follow, then it's your choice that which method you are going to follow. But if you take my suggestion, if it's not mentioned, always go for formula method. But yes, in few cases, even factorization becomes easier. But if factorization is not coming into your mind, then directly go for the formula method. Okay? I hope you all have understood. So we will meet in the next video. You all are watching Ganit Matics. Abhasavan Hoga Sol. Thank you all.